Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack once more. One of my subscribers who's all the way down in New Zealand has been in touch with me and it's led to quite a technical discussion and challenge and question and a bit of a muddle going on. So I thought I'd share with you some of the things that we've been talking about. Now, what it boiled down to is this book here, Building a Transceiver. It's an RSGB publication by Eamon, EA9GQ. Now, Eamon did a great series of articles and columns for Radcom, the RSGB journal, called Homebrook. I think it ran for a number of years. And a lot of us built his circuits and various other things and had a lot of fun um, getting back into Homebrook as a consequence of these columns. Now, there are two books published. One is this one, Building a Transceiver, which does exactly what it says on the tin. And there's also this Homebrew cookbook, which is really a, a republish of all of the Homebrew articles, as far as I'm aware, but I, I'm happy to be correct. Now, in this book here on page 57 is the schematic diagram that you can now see on the screen. Now, this is a, a part of a receiver design. So we're talking about a mixer inside a, a receiver. Now, this mixer circuit is extremely standard. We've all probably seen something like that. Two trifilar wound inductors and four usually matched diodes, often shot key, uh, something like a, a 5111 I think they are, or a BAT85. I've often used 1N4148s in these kind of mixers with great success. But on the output port of this mixer, the IF port, we've got something sat here called a diplexer, which is not something I've ever come across before. I've heard of a duplexer, which is something that you'd use to connect two antennas, uh, sorry, a radio with two RF outputs to a single antenna, perhaps. But I've never heard of a diplexer before. And whilst it's a very simple looking circuit, it's caused a lot of us quite a bit of anguish to try and figure out what on earth is going on here. So before we come back to that, one of the things that I found when I was trying to figure all this out, a lot of the reference text talk, talked about IMD and third order IMD and third order IMD intercept point. So I thought it's worth a quick reminder about what that is before we go to look at this circuit in some more detail. So IMD stands for intermodulation distortion and it's basically products that are generated as a result of non-linearity in RF mixers or RF circuits or amplifiers or whatever it might be. So for example, if we were to have two input signals with frequencies of let's say F1 and F2, any non-linearity in our circuitry will end up mixing them together to produce other products. Now second order products are generally the sum and the difference, certainly in a mixer you'll see the sum and the difference of the two input frequencies. They're not such a problem, but the third order products, which are two times F1 minus F2 or two times F2 minus F1 plus three F1, three F2, those, the first two, the two F1 minus F2 and the two F2 minus F1, tend to be very close to our target frequency and therefore they can be more problematic. Now, the second order products are way away from a wanted signal, so not such an issue. But as I said, the third order products are quite close together. Now, a very interesting characteristic of these third order IMD products is that the amplitude of them increases at three times the rate of the RF input. So there's a theoretical point, usually past the point where you can actually achieve it due to clipping or whatever it might be. But there's a theoretical point which is called the third order intercept point. And that's a number that's often quoted in receiver specifications. So let's take a look at a practical example of these third order IMD products on the spectrum analyzer. What I'm going to do is set up a local oscillator at 100 megahertz. I'm going to inject it with uh, also inject an RF signal of 10 and 10.24 megahertz from a dual oscillator that we've used in previous uh, videos. We're going to mix them together in a fairly standard mixer and then we're going to have a look at the spectrum analyzer output. The spec N will be tuned to 110 megahertz but our problematic third order IMDs will sit in this case at 109.76 and 110.48. Our target signals will be at 110 and 110.24, so very close to these third order IMD products. So let's have a look at the spectrum analyzer and see what we can see. So here's an excellent example 
of IMD products. What we've got here is, as I just showed in the diagram, we've got a local oscillator of 100 megahertz at plus 10 dBm, and then I've got the dual oscillator that I've used in previous videos at 10.0 and 10.24 megahertz. I've set that up to be 0 dBm. Those two signals are going into the RF port of my mixer, and the spectrum analyzer is connected to the IF port. So the two signals that we're actually interested in, if you like, the wanted signals, are this one here at 110, so it's the local oscillator plus the RF, and the local oscillator plus the second RF at 110.24. So these are the two wanted signals. Now in this case, the third order IMD products are sat here and here. So they're very close to the target frequency. So you can see that trying to just filter them out with bandpass filters or crystal filters or whatever you might have is going to be very difficult because they're very, very close to the uh, to the target frequency. Now, what we can do now that you see, if I now add 10 dB of attenuation to my uh, RF signal, you'll see that the IMD products have reduced by 30 dB. So I've added, I'll do it again, so there, that's um, 0 dBm, my RF signal. If I now drop it by 10 dB, then the IMD, the third order IMD products have dropped by 30 dB. My target frequency has dropped by 4 or 5 dB. And if I add another 10 dB, you can see that my wanted signals are still very much present on this back end, but the third order IMD has dropped into the spectrum analyzer noise. So that's an illustration of IMD products coming out of a mixer and why we need to care about them. So I posted for some help on the GQRP Club forum. Uh, once again, what do you mean you're not a member? Why would you not be a member? Um, I posted on the GQRP Club forum to try and get some help as to what this uh, circuit did. And quite a number of people were kind enough to offer LT Spice simulations. Um, the best one, or perhaps the most useful one, was from Nick, G-A-I-N-E. And this basically shows that the impedance that this diplexer shows to the IF port of the mixer is pretty flat across a very wide range of frequencies. And we think this is the key to the circuit design and what these 50 ohm resistors are basically doing. It's allowing a very, very good match to the output port of the mixer, which of course is very, very important that it sees a good 50 ohm load. So this simulation here, the bottom white dotted line you can see along here, is basically the impedance at a particular point, but we think it varies from about around 50 ohms right across a pretty wide frequency span. So that was the, the theory behind the circuit, and of course there are two peaks in here, because both of these tuned circuits should have a resonant frequency of about 10.7 megahertz. Um, and when you physically make this thing, we'd need to line them up one on top of the other, ideally. So my physical build of the thing looks like this when I sweep it from zero to 20 megahertz, a lot wider perhaps than we were expecting. Uh, but I've managed by building it with a variable capacitor on one of the LC circuits and squishing and pulling apart the, um, the windings of this inductor, I've managed to get them so that they actually match quite nicely. So what I'm going to do now is stick it on the bench, replicate the test circumstances that are described in this book on page 57, and see how close we get to the IMD figures that Eamon claims he saw when he built it. Let's get on with that. So what we're looking at here is the output of the mixer, so the IF port of the mixer. The local oscillator port has got a signal of 20.85 megahertz at approximately 23 dBm. And then the RF port has got 0 dBm signal at 10 and 10.24 megahertz. So our target signals are marked with markers 1 and 2, and our third order IMD products are markers 3 and four. Now, according to the textbook, uh, on, again I'm on page 57, Eamon claims that his third order IMD products, so three and four, were 60 dB below 
the wanted signals of 1 and 2. Now mine aren't even 30 dB below. And I've got the levels set exactly as he says. So 0 dB MRF plus 23 dB M local oscillator. However, if I add 10 dB to my RF input as attenuation, you'll see that my third order IMD products drop right into the spectrum analyzer noise. Now, these two peaks here are the input frequency. So this is my 10 and my 10.24. I've then mixed it with 20.85 to subtract to get close to my 10.7 megahertz target of the diplexer. So my, my signals are either side of that. So that looks like a very, very good result. But at zero dBm, then the IMD products are very high. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to swap out swap out the mixer and replace it with a mini circuits um, this says ZAD11 uh, on the bottom of it I'm just going to stick that in the circuit instead and we can see how this compares to a commercial mixer so this is the commercial mixer with the 0 dBm uh, RF input and you can see a very similar high level of uh, third order IMD products. But if I drop the RF input by 10 dB, whilst the signals are better, the third order IMD is much worse with this mixer uh, because it's still visible. And on, on the homebrew mixer, it dropped right into the spectral analyzer noise. But it's still 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 dB down. Uh, only with the homebrew one am I seeing more than 60 dB. Um, Anyone got any comments? Let's discuss it down below. It would be good to get to the bottom of what's right, what's wrong, and what's in a muddle here. And just to repeat the experiment, this is with the RF input 10 and 10.24 MHz at 0 dBm, and then this is at minus 10 dBm. So you can see that the third order IMD products drop immensely um, with that difference.